After you've had your ProSet XT Series Rivet Tool in service for quite a while, you may need to reseal it. Uh, we will go through that process, but first we're going to have to blow this thing up. Hello, uh, welcome to Renew Tool and Supply. My name is Dennis. I'd like to show you how we take your new XT tool and go through resealing it. And the first thing we'll start with is the exhaust valve. And for that, we need a fixture, a little retainer clip, and the spring. And we insert that. There, we'll go in this way. There. The next thing we want to do after we have the exhaust valve in is to install the air valve and the, the valve spool. So what we'll do is we'll take our fixture and we have a, our relubricator deal ring. We'll put that on the fixture and insert that into the into the, where the air valve receptacle is. And the next thing is to insert the valve spool itself. So that, I have that lubricated. We insert that into the lower body. And then we take our fixture that we have, put that in to hold that valve or that spool in, take our O-ring, Put that in the end of our fixture. And then we insert this so that it attaches to that valve spool. Now the valve spool is, is inserted and it, it won't come out. And that O-ring is, is part of the seat. And then we move on from there. We want to put the air valve in. <clears throat> so we install that and put our last O-ring in there. And that part of it's finished. So we can set that aside. So we move on from there to, uh, we need to install the O-ring, which I have done here to uh, seal the lower handle. And then we move on to installing the gasket, the upper gasket. And we wanna make sure that's aligned with the small hole that we have here, which uh, will be the uh, air hole, actually. And then the next thing is to install the overmold, the, the handle. So we get that on. Run that all the way down. And then we have to install these, uh, the lower gaskets and gasket, gasket plate. We'll put that on. And we wanna make sure they stay lined up with that hole down in there as well. So we'll get that down in there. Get the plate next. And then this gasket. So the next thing we install the, uh, the lower handle boot, and then we grasp the upper handle and insert that. All right, uh, the next thing we wanna do is install the air valve, which is in about three pieces here. We have the inner valve, the outer tube, and the retaining plate. <clears throat> so we'll install that, and these, ears, if you can see them, are notched. They need to make sure there's clearance on the uh, exhaust. So we'll take our screws and get those started. Okay, we'll take our Allen wrench. And we'll run those down just so they're snug. Okay, and then we'll do a final tightening. Okay, so then we can move on to Recharge, we'll actually put the hydraulic oil in and go through that process. We'll go ahead and fill this with oil. And I want you to be able to see, I'm gonna do is remove that so you can actually see the oil coming out. There you can see it's starting to drip out. So I know I have oil in there. We'll put the fill plug back in. We'll refill this. 
and we want to insert our ram uh, seal and we want to make sure we've lubricated the o-rings have a little container we can use our put our excess oil in and we'll insert that in here and we'll open this bleed port enough so we can see a solid stream of oil there we go now we have a stream of oil so then we can close that and then we can move on to installing the nut that secures the upper handle to the lower handle so we'll insert the retaining nut and washer and I have I have put the 242 Loctite on here and thread that on then we'll take our ratchet and we'll snug it down a little more all right now we need to we need to put a final torque on this we have our torque wrench we want to torque this to uh, about 10 to 12 newton meters and when we're done we want to make sure this flat is lined up with this hole right here this uh, part of the air tube so now we'll in insert or install the uh, ejector valve we want to make sure we lubricate the o-rings again take our fixture insert it and then oops push that in there and then uh, our next step is to start putting the, the manual collection portion of this back in we'll start with the isolation valve which there's also o-rings on that which we want to uh, lubricate so we'll get that installed this is the extension of that which goes into the back cap so that will be what shuts off the air but before we get to that point I should probably install the uh, return spring first we will go ahead and put a little lubrication on this as well get that inserted we'll get the back cap installed we'll run that down okay next thing is the mandrel guide uh, another guide tube that will go into the MCS collector there's an o-ring on that which we want to lubricate as well insert that and tighten that up okay so now we can install manual collection base there okay this is the mandrel deflector that keeps the uh, mandrels when they're being ejected from hitting the back end of the collector body so we'll get that in get that tight we'll get to installing the mineral collection bottle when I get when we get farther along but I just want to make sure I check the operation of the air isolation valve okay we will lube the uh, air tube and then we'll install that air piston there so now that's set the next thing to do is to Thread our intensifier chamber on. Put a little grease on there. So once we have the intensifier chamber screwed on, we'll, we'll tighten it right down tight with a, a socket and ratchet. There. Then we can move on to um, working on the front end of the tool and putting the trigger valve and trigger in, in place. We'll grab our trigger and our Schrader valve. We'll insert our Schrader valve, tighten that up, and snug that down. You don't need to over torque it, but you want it in tight. The next thing we take our trigger button, and we have a temporary pin. I think it's under 1.190, but the temporary pin, so you can put this in, and we want to insert our new trigger pin. And so we'll take that and get it started. And there are triggers installed, so we can put our temporary pin. And you'll want to keep one around. It's, I think it's 0 0.190 is the correct diameter. And now we're to the point of installing the front end parts. So we have our pulling head adapter, our uh, jaw guide and jaws, the nose housing, and our uh, mandrel guide, our jaw pusher spring, and jaw pusher. So we need to first install the 
pulling head adapter, which we take the nut, we'll thread the nut on, run that down almost to the end of the threads. Then take the uh, pulling head adapter, thread that on until we just start to touch that nut. And we'll take our two 15 millimeter wrenches and we'll hold the pulling head adapter and run the lock nut up to it. We don't want to tighten the pulling head all the way down under the piston shaft. So then we have that. We'll take the manual guide and jaunt pusher assembly, which includes the spring, insert that in the jaw guide with the jaws installed. Pull the jaw guide lock back and we'll back that off to the first lock notch. Well, then the last thing we need to do in the assembly of the tool is to put the mandrel collection system together. And we'll start by taking the base plate, end plate, and aligning these holes with the bosses that are on the fixture. Get those there. We'll take our first silencer and set that on. Take the uh, clear collection bottle and we'll set that on. Get that down. And we have the end cap and the last silencer. We'll get that installed into the end cap. And we'll set that on the bottle. The next thing is to take the O-ring. We'll put a little bit of grease on that because that uh, vent end cap does spin. So we'll put that on. And then take the the flat washer and the retaining screw. And we'll set those on there. And taking our three millimeter Allen wrench, get that started and run that down. And you don't want to over tighten it, but you, it, needs to be, it needs to be pretty firmly secured there. And that's it. The next thing we need to do is to make sure we have the uh, proper stroke of the tool and we will remove the fill plug We'll have to charge our syringe. We'll thread that on. Force that down. That pushes the hydraulic piston back down. Okay, so then we remove it, reinstall our fill screw and seal. Tighten that down. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is connect air to, uh, to the tool and we want to cycle it to make sure we're getting the uh, proper stroke, which for this tool I believe is 18 millimeter. So we'll connect the air, turn our slide switch on. Now we'll set this, our verniers, and run that down flush. So we are at 68.46 millimeters. We'll cycle the tool. And we are at 48, so we're getting almost 20 millimeters, so we're getting plenty of stroke in this tool. So uh, I would consider it fully charged. Now, if you didn't get that, go back through the, the priming sequence again, and, uh, and that should take care of it. So at this point, we can turn the air off and disconnect the air line, and then we will uh, Reinstall a nose housing. Tighten that down by hand. Our last thing is our MCS collector. The last thing now that we've, we've set the tool up and we've, we've made sure that we have the correct scope, let's, let's test the tool. So we're gonna do this with a rivet that is closer to the stroke length of this tool. So we'll have it on. And the manual gets back here into the collection. And the air, that's the nice thing. That's an air isolation switch I was talking about, which that saves on the energy usage. You know, you don't run your compressor as much. Well, there you have it. Uh, you're back together and ready to run. Now, if you do happen to run across a problem, you can give us a call, 989-720-3636. Uh, or if you'd like, you can send it in to us. If you got a lot out of this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. You have a good day.